Welcome back to our series. Last week, many of the crops in our garden have been harvested. The crops that still need more growing time are the squash, corn, tomatoes, beans, and cabbage. We will continue to monitor their progression and harvest them at the appropriate time. This video will focus on what would be done after harvesting in the mid-1800s. Relating this video back to the first in our series, I am standing in the Shirk Summer Kitchen. So without any further ado, this video will talk about the Summer Kitchen. What makes this kitchen different than the one inside the Shirk Log Cabin? Well, the purpose of this summer kitchen is to move the flow and intensity of heat away from the main area of the log cabin and away from the family. The intensity of the heat from the summer and the stove in the main cabin would leave the entire house way too hot, especially since heat rises and most of the Shirk's children lived upstairs. How was this crisis avoided when the stove and or fire always had to be running for cooking and other means. Well, the summer kitchen was created. This log addition to the main house would designate an area for the stove and or fire to be on and always working. This would prevent any heat from going into the main area of the house and affecting the family and the children. The kitchen was said to be the heart of a settler's home. To obtain the basic necessities, kitchens were often built first. It is even recorded that some settlers build beds right into their kitchens so they can be in the same room as a stove and or fire, thus in the heat. Like mentioned in the first video of our series, the fire was constantly burning in a settler's home. We obviously know that a summer kitchen hosted a stove and or fire, but what else was hosted at the summer kitchen? Before settlers were able to build and purchase stoves, they relied on fire and the open flame to cook their meals, boil their water, etc. These artifacts shown on the screen all have longer handles than modern ones. Long utensils did not heat up quickly, which would keep the cook safe. This wooden spoon displayed on the screen has a much shorter handle than the last. The spoon was not used to stir things over an open fire. It was for a stove or other means. Similar to this, Pots changed once a kitchen had a stove. Instead of using a cradle or spider legs to support the pot over an open flame, the pots or pans were placed directly onto the stove top. The artifact shown on the screen is an aluminum canning pot with an inserting steamer tray. Circa 1929, which is almost a century later than when the Shirks occupied their log cabin. But, comparing this pot with the one previously shown, we can see a huge change in design, shape, texture, purpose, use, etc. Take a look at this picture, which shows the Canadian home cookbook, 730 Valuable Recipes. The text on the lower half of the book, near the bottom, reads as follows. This cookbook contains 739 tested and tried recipes for breakfast dishes, soups, fish, meats and poultry, cakes, pies, puddings, fancy dishes, ice cream, summer drinks, and confectionery. This cookbook has several great and interesting recipes for many different occasions and using various herbs and ingredients. Take a moment and pause this video if you would like and check out the description below. It includes two links to these pictures. Check out some of the recipes and maybe you'll be motivated to cook a nice 19th century meal for dinner tonight. Thank you for watching our ninth video for Colburn. Check back next week to see how we utilize our crops and summer kitchen. See you soon!